We're gonna prove this identity. This is the first thing that I'm gonna show you about how T results can help us. Um, <laughs> sorry, I lose one now. Now, do you remember when we did trig identities before camp? I told you that broadly speaking, there were three different categories of trig identity proofs that you had to do. Um, there was the ones where you had simple equals complicated, right? So that's easy. You start with the complicated side and you work on it, work on it until you make it simple. And then you say, cool, I'm there, I'm done. Right? Uh, another kind was when you had complicated equals complicated. Right? It's like, ah, oh, both sides look disastrously messy. So I suggested to you, okay, well just kind of work with both sides if you can't immediately see what you should do. And eventually they ought to connect, right? The hardest kind though was where both sides were simple and where everything looks nice and neat and there's not many terms. And what you have to do is you have to make one of the sides messier, like multiply by you know, something over something, or add something and take away something, in order to make one side more complicated, and then you can use some identities on it, like the Pythagorean identity or whatever, and then it comes into this. Okay. Now when you have a look at this, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Have a look at both sides. It's as simple as it gets, pretty much. There's no like reciprocal identities, nothing is squared. Um, there's no obvious place where you're like, oh, I know what I should do next. This is kind of what you get when you've finished going through one of these processes. So what do you do? You can solve this without T results, right? And I'll let you, uh, I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader for you to try and work out how to do that. It's possible. But remember I said to you, the whole point is to hijack your skill with algebra to try and help us with trigonometry. Okay. So have a look at this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say let, I'm going to introduce this substitution. I'm going to say let t equal tan theta on 2. I should point out, you've got to do it every time you use t results because you're about to talk about t's in the original question. Okay. There are t's in it. Okay. So just introduce it. Once you've done that, you can translate the question completely into algebra and leave the trig identities behind. Let's start with the left-hand side. If t is equal to this, then all of these things I've written in my box, all of the t results are true. You don't have to restate them all over again. That's all you need to say. But you might like to like have them there on the side. So if you've written that down somewhere, have that on a page that you can view as well. I'm now going to write the left-hand side in those terms. So on the top, I've got 1 minus what? 1 minus t squared. 1 minus t squared on? 1 plus t squared. Okay. By the way, just as a quick note. I've said to you before, reference sheet is there, but even though it's like a safety blanket, don't rely on it. <laughs> I couldn't rely on it because I didn't have it. I had to learn, how do I remember? Like one of the tricky things to remember is, wait, which one is which? Is it one plus t squared on one minus t squared? Or is it, is it the one minus on the top? It's an easy way to work out. Like it's kind of obvious which one has to be on the top. Uh, in a right angled triangle, right? This is meant to be the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. How do you know which side in any given triangle is the hypotenuse? There are two ways you can know. Yes, yeah, so just one. Okay, there's, there's the right angle, but a more helpful definition in this case is the hypotenuse has to be the longer side, right? Like you can't construct a triangle, a right angle triangle with a shorter hypotenuse. Now have a look at these two. Which one is going to be the bigger one? It clearly has to be this one, right? T, no matter what T is, T squared has to be a positive number. So if you add it, you're going to make it longer. If you subtract it, you're going to make it shorter. So this is just a little sort of mental shortcut for you rather than having to turn to the reference sheet and find it. So <laughs> you remember this straight away. Divided by, what's on my denominator? 2t. 2t on 1 plus t squared. It's the same hypothesis, isn't it? Okay. Now, I'll grant you, it looks like a bit of a mess right now, but that's okay. We've had lots of practice with algebra just like this. <coughs> Hey, look, you've got fractions on fractions. What do we usually do to fix that? I should multiply through by something. What would be one thing that gets rid of all my fractions on fractions? That, that denominator right there. Let's do it. Let's multiply through. This is going to become oops, it's a 1 plus t squared. Multiply that through. Then I'm going to subtract. Just watch out for your double negative there. 1 minus t squared. You see how I've gotten rid of that denominator there. So far, so good. What's going to happen on my denominator? Multiplying this by 1 plus t squared. So it just becomes 2t, doesn't it? 
Okay, are you happy with what I've done so far? That's what I've written down. Uh, I will actually point out, and maybe if you've got another color, you want to um, identify this. When you work with t results, because so often you get this 1 plus t squared denominator, that happens like 80% of the time at least, very frequently the first thing you're going to do is multiply by 1 plus t squared on 1 plus t squared. That's what I did on the top and the bottom. Okay? Um, you'll see later on this lesson, even when you're doing trig identities, you, you like when you're proving your solving equations, you still do this. Okay, let's collect some like terms. What are you getting on your new row? 2t squared. The 1 minus 1, they're gone. This is a t squared minus negative t squared. 2t squared is perfect. That's divided by 2t. So now I have a simplified version. Okay. Now think about this, right? Do you remember I said to you, the hard thing about when an identity has simple equals simple is you have to rack your brain through all those hundreds and thousands of trig identities you know now. And you're like, which one do I use? But here, how much thinking did you do about like, is it the Pythagorean one? Is it one minus cos squared or one plus cos squared? How much thinking did you have that required that knowledge? Answer, none. You were just doing algebra. You can almost do that on autopilot. You don't have to think very creatively. You can do this very efficiently. I've got the left hand side. It's simple. What do you think I should do now? Right hand side. I should work with the right hand side. I held your hand with the left hand side. Can you work on the right for me? Um, I'm done. It doesn't require all that much to get there, which even though some of the algebra looks like it'll be messy, like you've got fractions on fractions, that's usually gross, okay? Because of the actual nature of the T results, they fall out quite quickly, right? And you get a lot of things that cancel. They're better because these two things are supposed to be identical. And the question was um, raised twice. You get to here, right? Right hand side equals that. So do I have to then like repeat the whole process and go backwards? The answer is, with T results, this is one of the nice convenient places where, no, you don't have to. Um, you don't need to reverse engineer your algebra because the algebra lays it out completely clearly. Whereas with trig identities, when you're working with Pythagorean identity, blah, 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 not always so obvious, okay? So at this point, I've shown that the left-hand side is something. I've operated on it independently, that's the key. I've done the same with the right, they're equal, that's all I was required to show, so I'm done. Okay.